of the Capital Maharaja Group. And uh, we're broadcasting from Dawson Street, which is where our studio is. This is uh, a brand new studio as a result of uh, the pandemic, of course, uh, keeping everyone safe. And uh, this evening we're joined by um, the State Minister for Fisheries. He's right here after a uh, rather long campaign. Uh, and uh, we're grateful that he's actually made it to the studio. He's right here, Mr. Kanchana Vijay Sekra. Good evening, Kanchana. Good evening, Faas. Uh, lovely to see you. How was the campaign? Uh, the campaign was, a, like you said, the longest campaign that we've had in our history. Right. Uh, it was a long, tiring campaign. Uh, but I guess uh, this was one of the uh, new experience for all of us. Uh, but it was a good victory in the end. Do you, you, you relish this victory? Of course, because uh, uh, if you see the, the overwhelming majority the, the voters have given us uh, and the faith that they have given on, kept on the president and the prime minister and also re-electing uh, almost all the members who were part of the joint opposition back uh, in 2015. So yeah, it is a victory that we could relish and uh, gives new hope and they have given approval for the uh, the three-month period that we were in a caretaker garment and w as well as how we handled the COVID-19 situation for the for the last five months. Mm -hmm. And um, we see this president and the prime minister uh, almost uh, micromanaging it uh, in the sense that he's, they've got ministers, state ministers for very specific uh, uh, jobs or functions. You've got your own secretaries as well and I'm told your own budgets. So it's pretty focused. Uh, obviously, the president means business. Um, what do you have to say about the fisheries? What are you going to tell him in your plan to him? I think it is a well sort of plan, and uh, it is a good practical plan as well. Now, these ministries, uh, the functions that we have been given were already there in existence for the last 70 years. Mm. Uh, but we have been given specific roles and we have been given uh, the same task as a cabinet minister. The only thing is that the state ministers don't go to the cabinet. Uh, but we have been given our own budget allocations, our own secretaries, uh, the, the facilities to work with. Uh, and also I think uh, it caters to the policy statement that he uh, he presented to the public uh, when he was the presidential candidate. So uh, all these sectors are covered in it. Uh, and, and right now the, the task that I've been given, the, the responsibility that I've been given, not just the coastal line of fisheries, but also the inland fisheries, as well as mm -hmm. uh, the, the modification of the, the existing fleet and also uh, infrastructure development. Uh, so there is a lot of hope. Uh, on, on the ministry and the response is given to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope uh, we could deliver on it in the next couple of years. And um, what uh, immediate plans, what is your sort of uh, uh, to-do list, if you like, uh, to up the game in terms of uh, uh, fishing and uh, especially exports as well? Um, well, there's two sectors to think about. Now, the, the marine coastal line fishing uh, has been our main business for the last uh, 100, 150 years. But our uh, contribution towards our GDP is about 1%. Uh, and we have so much resources, being, I, being an island, but we haven't utilized it. But I see potential, more potential in the inland fisheries, because we have lakes, we have reservoirs, uh, we have rivers, we have willows, we have ponds, uh, we have so much to do uh, and also there is a big demand for inland fisheries as well as ornamental fish. So that is a big industry that we can cater to. Uh, and I think uh, improving uh, not just infrastructure development, but also we need to improve the mindset of the people as well. The fishermen, we need to educate them, give them new technology, uh, and also uh, modernize uh, their ways of uh, uh, fishing. So those sort of things are things that we are thinking right now because Right now, uh, even though we are an island nation, we still import a lot of fish. Really? We import a lot of uh, raw fish, we import a lot of dry fish, we import a lot of Maldive fish, we import sprats. We, but uh, we've got it all here. Uh, sprats, there is a difficulty. Okay. But everything else, we could, we could do everything here. 
and uh, that's what you're going to do. Yeah, that that is one a uh, one target that the president has given uh, given me as well. Because right now, uh, I was looking at the numbers this morning as well. Uh, we import about thirty five thousand metric tons of dry fish uh, to this country, dry fish and moldy fish, and we make about fifty four thousand metric tons as well. So if we can decrease that thirty four thousand and make it to the export market as well. Uh, that's one area that we are looking at. And also we uh, import uh, a lot of canned fish. Mm -hmm. uh, our daily consumption requirement of canned fish is about 250,000 cans per day. Wow. Uh, and if we can uh, avoid those things. If Are there, and how much of that is manufactured locally? Manufactured locally, right now, out of the 250,000, we have gone up to about 50% right now. Okay. We were at about 20%. Uh, is that through um, private enterprise? Private enterprises. Okay. Nothing has been done by the, the, the public uh, enterprises, but everything is private, uh, privately owned. And what would you be doing to encourage the entrepreneurs in that area? Uh, we need to give them tax breaks as well, and also we need to give them the technology that we have. Right. Because uh, sharing that technology and the knowledge, uh, especially uh, the fisheries ministry, the authorities have. Yeah. Uh, we have a research unit, uh, the NARA, uh, and we have the Indian fishery unit, the, the NACDA. So those institutions, we have a lot of people with uh, a wealth of knowledge uh, we can share, and we have our facilities as well. So we are willing to share those facilities. We are willing to even contribute to developing uh, the canneries and their hatcheries, their uh, uh, facilities. So mm -hmm. for that, uh, we are going to invest a lot of money on that as well. Excellent. And uh, <coughs> uh, Kanchna, uh, how important is this uh, the export thing? Because obviously we are uh, the whole world is in a uh, economic uh, mess, if you like. Sri Lanka is also uh, economically challenged, and we need uh, lots, lots of uh, foreign exchange coming in. What, what's your plan to up the game on exports? Well, for us now, there is not much that we need to do to up the game right. because the demand for our products is there. Right. Uh, right now, even in the world markets, even before the COVID-19 situation, uh, the demand for local tuna, Sri Lankan tuna, was the highest. Mm -hmm. So, but our supply, uh, there is a shortage in supply because of the quality product that we make. Uh, because right now, with the multi-day vessels that we ha have in our fleet, we have about 6,000 multi-day vessels, which are about 3,000 go tuna fishing. Uh, but uh, our post-harvest loss is the biggest concern mm -hmm. right now. So we need to find a way to modernize our fleet, uh, introduce new refrigeration systems into the boats, because right now we carry bulk ice, mm -hmm. uh, which is not the uh, modern technology that we need to use. So right. we need to modernize that. And also, uh, we need to make our airport an export hub. Uh, right now, we don't even have those facilities at the airport, because the, the stay yeah. at the airport yeah. takes yeah. about five, yeah. six hours for the exporters. Oh. And yeah. there are no chill rooms, there are no cool rooms. But you've got Matale down south. Sorry? You've got Matale airport. That is one area that we can develop as well. Mm -hmm. Matale we can develop. Uh, but right now, most of our processing plants are uh, catered around, uh, centered around uh, Katunayaka. So our new processing plants, yes, that is one area that we are looking at, mm -hmm. developing Matala into an export hub as well. Uh, and also in the meantime, immediately we need to uh, channel in the export uh, uh, sector uh, in, the, in the existing airports, in the Katunayaka. We need to give those facilities to the, the exporters. Yeah. And we need to make sure that it goes on time. Uh, right now, Sri Lankan Airlines uh, is our main carrier, but uh, it, it is a little bit higher costly than the other airlines. So right. we, are, we are negotiating with the airlines to see if we can manage the cost down. So we need to develop those infrastructure developments. Right. Uh, so the, those are areas that we have to look into, uh, because right now, uh, out of our catch about 48,000 metric tons a year on tuna, we export only about 10,000, but the requirement is there, the demand is there, so we need to manage that. And, uh, uh, Councillor, what about uh, uh, the perennial problem of uh, uh, Indian fishermen encroaching on our, on our territorial waters? Um, that is also one of the biggest concerns that we've had for a longer time. Uh, but 
the last decade or so, after the after the the North and East uh, the the civil war, uh, we have managed to uh, minimize those uh, encroachments uh, because we have a, a support from the navy now guarding our, our seas. But uh, right now the the fisheries department or the fisheries ministry doesn't have any monitoring vessels. Oh. So so last Thursday when we had the meeting with the president, uh, he instructed the dockyard to build the first uh, service and monitoring vessel uh, for the Sri Lanka Fisheries Ministry. So we are going to do operations with the coast, uh, coast conservation, uh, sorry, the, the coast guard and the navy, mm -hmm. uh, a collaboration move to uh, monitor our seas. And also we are going to equip all our vessels uh, with the vessel monitoring systems. Right, right. now only about um, 10% of our vessels are equipped with the vessel monitoring systems, so we, go, we are going to equip them as well. And we have other plans also to prevent them coming into our waters, but I can't say that in public, uh, uh, how we are going to prevent them. Okay. Uh, and we have a good dialogue with the, the Indian High Commission as well. So uh, it has reduced, but uh, a lot of illegal encroachments, illegal fishing actually takes place in the North and East. I see. And uh, what are the what are the other challenges that you're going to fa that you have faced and that you will work towards uh, eradicating? Um, no, biggest challenges in our fisheries sector is uh, getting people into new technology uh, because a lot of people are still used to traditional systems, uh, traditional methods. Uh, but we need to convert them into the new technological ways. We need to give them those equipment. We need to. Uh, educate them as well and also we need to uh, go away from the illegal fishing methods because right now uh, we are on the borderline of being blacklisted or redlisted mm. uh, if we uh, it happened once back in 2014 end of 2014 mm. uh, the the European Union banned us uh, from exporting tuna uh, so we don't want to risk that so we're thinking of uh, introducing new laws but at the same time when we are introducing new laws we have to give uh, give out a different plan to the people who are already using illegal methods so we need to uh, educate them we need to equip them with the new methods so those are the challenges that we're facing right now um, one of our viewers is asking us here whether uh, the minister has um, uh, partaken in canned fish uh, both locally and imported, and what is your personal opinion on both? Uh, is, that, is the local one better? Is is the question really? The local one is better. The much the quality yeah. wise, it's better. Uh, taste wise, I would say people are used to a certain taste now yeah. for the imported ones. But uh, we can do that. We can uh, mm -hmm. we can manage that. I think in the future we will have to convert into that. Excellent. On that note, uh, we'll go for a short break and uh, we'll be back after this uh, very short message. Don't go away. After all, this is Newsline Live. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And uh, welcome back to Newsline Live. We're in conversation with Mr. Kanchner. Vijay Sekhar, who is, of course, the State Minister of Fisheries uh, and uh, Associated Things. Uh, what about your, the inland uh, uh, fishing? How are you going to develop that aquaculture, prawn farms, all that sort of thing? Um, no, one of the biggest concerns that we have is uh, with the nature. Right. Uh, getting the approvals from the Wildlife Department, the Coast Conservation, uh, sometimes the Forest Department. Uh, because uh, <clears throat> right now it's sort of in a gray area because mm -hmm. uh, even though the, the authority is with NACTA to uh, give out the permits to inland fisheries, you have to go through various different departments to get the approvals. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it takes about two years to get a uh, approval done. So a lot of people who are interested in investing and who are into aquaculture they get discouraged. So that's one area that we're looking into how we can get all these departments, all these authorities together and locate the areas that they can give a green light to go ahead. Mm -hmm. Because we have the, resor the resources, uh, we are not utilizing them. So that's one area that we need to work out. But 
that is an area that we can develop uh, rapidly and mm. we can uh, create jobs as well because uh, we've got about 5,000, uh, close to about 6,000 lakes in Sri Lanka, right. uh, ponds and lakes. So I, I don't think we're using 1,000 lakes on uh, inland fisheries. So you'll be focusing quite a lot of attention there. Yes, we are going to focus on that, but we need to uh, find what the demand is there for as well because we need to find the, the market. So uh, we're going to identify that and our research institutes have done a lot of studies mm. uh, and they have actually done a, a lot of studies not just related to aquaculture but what uh, products that they can go for. Now I visited uh, our research institute uh, last week yeah. and they had a whole uh, different range of products. Mm. They had uh, seaweed uh, yogurt that they had made uh, and it's a good vegan product right. that you can market well but we haven't been doing that. Uh, they had tuna soup, they had uh, uh, different kinds of uh, jellies, uh, other products that right. they, have, uh, they have done at the research levels, mm -hmm. but we can utilize them as well. So now we are going to combine all our departments to do that. Uh, but our the biggest hurdle is going to be with the, the environmental uh, groups, right. uh, not just the authorities, but uh, certain the groups, activists. as you know, we have seen activists. Yeah. Uh, in the in the last few days, as we've seen that, yeah. Uh, so we need to manage that. Now, um, thank you for giving us a pretty uh, detailed insight into what you hope to do uh, as the state minister and so on. I just want to ask, go touch a little bit on uh, the political side because obviously you're young, and uh, you've uh, you know uh, you've only just begun, right? So, in terms of that, uh, what, what, have you got any? Uh, any worries about the 19th Amendment? And th these are the things that the people are talking about now. Um, although, you know, uh, ironically, the, they've, the people have given the mandate, but yet, nevertheless, the, there is discussion about the 19th Amendment uh, and various issues. Um, are you worried in any way? And if so, what are your worries? I'm not worried about it because now, like you said, people have given the mandate, yeah. uh, two-thirds majority in the parliament. If people wanted just to have a government which uh, delivers on their policy statements, then they would have given a 130 majority, a simple majority in parliament. Right. But the people have given a, a two-thirds majority uh, for the first time for a single party uh, since this new electoral system came into place since 89. Yeah. Uh, I think 89 was also not a, a majority that was given to one party, political yes. party. Yeah. So they have given that majority not just to change the 19th Amendment. I think we need to uh, think about the entire constitution. So that's what we have been uh, talking about in the last five years. Uh, there are too many amendments into this new constitution. Uh, 19 times is too many for mm. a new, uh, we need to have a new constitution and, uh, and that's what we have promised, that's what we have uh, said in our statements as well. So uh, we need to take time uh, and my personal opinion is that we should deliver a new constitution uh, taking into the consideration. There are some certain parts that uh, we have to keep in this, uh, from this existing constitution mm. as well. Mm. Now, Right to Information Act yeah. is, a, is a good thing yeah. um, on, on this constitution. and. Uh, uh, even the president and our media spokesperson, the government spokesperson, the cabinet ministers have said that the five-year term will uh, be as it is, and mm -hmm. uh, even the president's term will be a two-term. 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 What, so, what do you say about, you know, um, I hear what you say, and it, it all sounds good, um, but what do you say about uh, the Constitutional Council, for example? One of the nominees to the council is someone who is facing serious allegations uh, and I stress the word allegations uh, on uh, various matters. And uh, that person is now in a position uh, to able to influence the, uh, the choice of judges and so on. So it's a little bit of an anomaly. You know, you're facing a barrage of uh, accusations and then you are on the other side saying, listen, you, I can, I can dictate terms. How comfortable are you in, with such a position? No, I think the Constitutional Council in the first place, that's 
one thing uh, that we didn't approve. Right. Uh, we, we always uh, were against it. If you can remember correctly, uh, none of our uh, representatives were there in the Constitutional Council at the last parliament. So we as a JO, we had 51 members and it increased to about 80, uh, 76. But none of our members were accommodated in the Constitutional Council. Mm. So the Constitutional Council that was back then created uh, had the same uh, feedback from the general public as well. So I don't think a Constitutional Council can control uh, the commissions or the appointments or anything else. Mm. So we need to look into those areas. Those are the areas that we need to uh, identify and change in the new constitution or in the amendments. Um, now if you look at uh, the independent commissions, uh, take for example the election commission uh, which is appointed. Uh, there is a three member election commission. Yeah. But you need all three members to be there to take decisions. Right. If one member decides not to go with the decision, uh, there's nothing that you can do. If right. one of the members decided, okay, they are not going to give their consent to hold elections, uh, there's nothing you can it's do. nothing that you can do, and you can't even uh, get rid of them. They have to resign on their own. So mm. there are certain areas that you need to change, and there were people who were uh, accused of things, uh, who had allegations as well in the past, mm. Constitution Council as well. Uh, but uh, when you're representing the president or when you're representing a political party or the speaker or the uh, opposition leader, uh, they, they put their uh, guy who they trust uh, to represent them. So mm. they, uh, their uh, voice is heard in the council. So uh, I think that entire pol constitution council should not be in the new constitution. It should be changed. Uh, but do you believe in the independence of these councils? Yes, of course. Of the commission, if, if they so are independently managed without politically being motivated yeah. or politically biased, uh, of course. But we have not seen that in the last four years. Uh, if you take the bribery commission, uh, the cases that we uh, com made complaints against, we made uh, 14 complaints in the top 10 list. Uh, we made complaints against the former prime minister. We made complaints against former ministers, but none of those things were entertained, not even a statement written down. And the commissions took uh, five years, stalled everything. Mm. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the police commission, yeah. uh, we can't still get rid of the, the IGP who was accused of holding information on the Easter bombings. We can't get rid of him. Uh, the election commission is the same thing. You saw how one member uh, was politically motivated and he uh, represented himself uh, different politically what his opinions were he said it out in public so you can't have independent commissions have people uh, appointed to that on politically motivated uh, activities mm -hmm. so as long as uh, the political party in power holds onto the commissions I don't think uh, they'll act independently um. We're back to fishing on this question. Uh, the boat industry must be developed. Foreigners who wish to bring in boats must be encouraged uh, than being sent from pillar to post to get permission from this, that, and the other. Um, boat industry, yes. We are having a dialogue with the, the industry as well. But our main biggest, uh, our main concern is that now allowing foreign vessels to mm. come into our seas uh, we have about 5,000 local fishermen who have their own vessels. So uh, they don't have the technology to do that. Right. So first of all, we need to match their technology. So what, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to equip the local fishermen. Uh, we're going to give them uh, subsidies as well from the government yeah. to develop their fleet. And if there are any local uh, fishermen or entrepreneurs who want to invest in uh, larger vessels, they're more than welcome to do that. But we are not allowing in the future to bring vessels that are built outside this country. We have dockyard, we have sea, so we have manufacturing about, uh, there's about 90 boat manufacturers here. So we are going to get them to manufacture that. Yeah. So if, if someone wants to bring in a, uh, a larger scale vessel, they can uh, make the placement order uh, in Sri Lanka. So ask them to build it. 
Okay. Uh, dockyard has built uh, vessels for overseas countries, Neil mm -hmm. Marine or all the other private companies. Even even our sea or the the Garment Institute, uh, it's providing vessels to Seychelles, Maldives, uh, to all other destinations. Mm -hmm. So we have the facilities here. Why would we purchase something from? So yeah, as a the entire government is focused on Sri Lanka first. We, we are going to uh, we are going to empower our local manufacturers, our local fishermen. Uh, if they want to invest here, yeah, yeah, they're more than welcome to do that. But we are not going to allow in the future to bring vessels that are being built out of Sri Lanka. If if we, if we can build it here, of course we are not going to allow it to be brought here. But if we can't have that technology, if we can't build it, of course we'll have to look into ways to accommodate that because right now our biggest concern is to uh, capture the uh, the export market right. the seafood industry is about 200 billion industry which our contribution is about 200 million US dollars okay um, good luck uh, Councillor Vijay Sekhar we've run out of time but uh, we uh, um, we've uh, been very interested in hearing what you do uh, come back again and tell us uh, how you get on Thank you for us. And that's the way it was on Newsline. Take care and a wonderful evening. And as always, God bless.